YouTube channel Meg's Wonderland. I'm Meg. Um, this is my first YouTube video, so you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm kind of learning how to do it, and like I'm an awkward person anyway, so this is gonna be super, you know, fun. But hopefully, I'm gonna show you ten steps of how to with resin right after I introduce myself. That was like the one hundredth attempt at that little intro that I just did, and you know what? Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. I started out wanting to experiment with resin. I just like did the normal things like watched a few YouTube videos, looked some stuff up online on how to, and I just found it really complicated and there was a lot of sort of terms that I didn't really understand and like products that I didn't know what they were used for. So I wanted to do this just to show you like 10 really easy, simple steps of how to do resin and what you're gonna need to do it. I was asked to be brand ambassador for Just For You Online UK, which was just amazing. And they've been so supportive and they've helped me so much with just little bits and their products are beautiful. So um, all the products that I'm gonna be using in this video as my examples are from Just For You Online UK and I have linked them below. So you can have a little click after and hopefully um, if you are a beginner looking for products, this will really help you. Please give my other social medias a follow. I am putting them up on the screen here. For those of you who have TikTok, um, I do a lot of art tutorials, resin tutorials, and just really silly videos. So yeah, if you want to check me out on there, um, have a look at my channel. And also, if you're on Instagram, my Instagram is here. So if you want to go and have a look, you can check me out. So I've heard you're not supposed to do this on here, but as I am new, please subscribe. Subscribe. Now I've finished awkwardly introducing myself, kind of. Um, yeah, here we go. 10 easy steps to making resin art. Step one, source and buy. Okay, so the first thing that is on your shopping list and that you definitely need is the resin. So here we go. It comes in two parts, resin and hardener. You're gonna be mixing these two parts together in equal amounts to end up with your end liquid that you will be making um, your resin art with. So these two things come in a pack when you buy them and this, when you mix them together, is what makes your resin. One more thing to add about um, this resin is um, it dries in four to five hours, which is actually really rare in a resin and um, normally they can take up to 24 hours to dry. So this is just, oh, for an impatient person like me, like I'm willing to admit, this is just amazing, honestly. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need on your shopping list is cups. Obviously, you'll see in my example videos as I show you them on the screen later on, I do use plastic cups. Obviously, they're a lot cheaper and they're easier to get, but where I can, I do use paper cups. And, you know, save the turtles and all of that kind of help the environment. Um, but, yeah, a little tip from me, um, Starbucks do really great cups and sometimes when you ask them they do give them to you also Costa um, also when you do order a coffee wash it out and then use your cup so yeah that's a really good tip for helping the environment and not buying loads of plastic cups you are going to be needing your cups to pour in your hardener and your resiner resiner oh okay this is what I mean awkward moment <laughs> to need your cups to pour in your resin and your hardener and then mix them together and then also when you mix in your glitters you're going to need some cups as well so um, I will show you that in a step later. Next thing you will need on your shopping list is wooden stirrers. Obviously I have an array of wooden forks and different types of stirrers but yeah um, any kind of stirrers, wooden lollipop sticks work really well but you're going to need these to mix your resin and hardener together and also when you mix your glitters in as well. Also another tip is Starbucks and Costa and Aladdin McDonald's this time. Also, always have these, you know, freely available on the side, ready to stir your coffee with. Um, so, okay, next on your shopping list is glitters and pigments. Now for me, this is just like the most, this is just the fun, creative bit. I love buying different pigments, different colors, different glitters. Um, so just for you ones come in a packet like this. Look how pretty they are. I've got, loads but as a beginner I would say buy three four packs of glitter like really 
think about the colours that you're buying and buy colours that complement each other so you can use them on different projects. But as you go on, obviously if you become resin obsessed like I am, you'll have a nice big collection of glitters. Also just to show you a few different pigments, they come in little pots like these, different sizes. As you can see the colours are amazing, they look even more amazing when they're mixed into the resin. But um, yeah, just to give you a quick look, it comes in a powder form which you then mix into the resin. But I'll show you that at a later stage. The next thing on my shopping list is moulds. So um, this is what you're going to be pouring your resin liquid into to then let set and then take out of after. So for an example, this is a mould that I haven't cleaned because you know I'm really good at cleaning moulds, not. Um, but yeah, this is the pyramid mould. Um, I'll show you an example of a pyramid I made uh, earlier on and a pyramid lamp as well. But um, yeah, you will need to purchase at least one mould to start off with. So this is what this one looks like and this is a um, coaster mould. So just to give you an example, they're made out of silicon and then this is what you'll be pouring your liquid into. Okay, so last on my shopping list is the finishing tools. This bit isn't really necessary, but I find them really useful. So I've added it on the end. You can buy them in like um, the range or, um, you know, at b &Q or anywhere like that, like homeware stores. Um, but they're called needle file sets and they just look like this and they're just really, really useful for when there's any leftover resin on your set project at the end, just to file it off a little bit and just make it look neater and smoother. Literally doing this and the neighbor is mowing the lawn. Like, why me? Why me? Can you hear it? Can you hear that? Okay, so that's all the shopping list. So super easy, right? And you don't actually need that much. Like. That won't cost you too much money to start off um, with your like resin experimenting. Step two. So step two is just plan and design. This isn't really like a step that everybody has to take, but I wanted to add this one in just at the beginning because when I first, first started out, I just kind of went in for it and I didn't really plan my colors or what I wanted to use or how I wanted to do it. So I just think it's worth saying that if you're not sure or you're not confident, then it's always sort of a lot better to plan out where you're gonna put your colors and um, how you want your end design to look. Okay, so part three, mixing your epoxy resin. I have a demonstration video playing here, but I'm gonna talk over the top of it just so I can sort of explain to you what's happening. So I've laid out all my cups and I'm gonna be pouring my resin into one cup and my hardener into the other. Now on the side here, you will find it says one to one ratio, which means the resin and the hardener are the same amount, which you will then be pouring into each other. So um, to measure this, I always just do it by eye, which is also why the plastic cups are quite good, because you can see through them um, but also you can level it out yourself if you're like really precise or if you're not sure just as a little tip sometimes I like to put in a tiny little bit more hardener just to make sure that it is going to set. When you are mixing your resin and hardener together you need to make sure that you're mixing it for at least three minutes. Step four. Step four is adding your glitters. So as you can see here I'm adding in different glitters and pigments into the final resin product which I am then going to be pouring into my mold in a later step. Step five, pouring. So I'm going to put some videos up here, they're going to be different videos going one after the other just to show you different molds that I use and different types of ways that I am pouring the resin into my molds. So you'll see on some of them that I'm just kind of layering up from the middle to the outer edges and other times I'll be working from the outer edges out to middle edges and the pyramid molds actually pouring, when you do pour the pyramid mold if this is what you're planning on doing, I always wait in between layers for them to set for at least four hours before I then pour in the next layer. So these molds are actually really time consuming, but actually might be a really good mold for your first project just because you only have to mix a tiny little bit of resin at a time and you can work sort of like hour by hour working up through the layers, if that makes sense, rather than sort of pouring it all in in one go and hoping for the best. But um, yeah, as you can see, there's loads of different techniques to pouring. There's no real right and wrong way. You've just got to try and find out what works best for you when pouring the resin into the moulds. Make sure it stays in the moulds. And um, I could speak from experience that it's always best to have a table underneath or a cloth that you don't mind, you know, 
been ruined because I've had to like sand down a lot of my tables or like throw away a lot of cloths and things like that when working with resin because it is hard to get off tables after especially when it sets obviously um, as my parents will tell you I have destroyed many shelves in the house and things like that so that's a really useful tip when pouring your resin into the mold but hopefully these videos are helping you to see how to pour in the resin and the types of colours that goes together or the types of colours that I like to use. So step six, air bubbles. Once you've poured your resin into your mould, you'll start to see all these little air bubbles, hopefully not that many, like hopefully not, um, but they all come to the surface and kind of pop away, but some of them actually stay there. The really fun ones that like to just sit there on the top of the surface. To pop the air bubbles, I like to use a little tool like this, which is just like an art tool, which I got from the range. Um, but you don't have to have anything like this. You can always just revert back to the wooden spoons and um, wooden sticks that you've already used and just literally go like that and just pop it and the air bubble will go away. Step seven, patience. So as I said earlier on in the video, I don't have a lot of patience. So when it comes to waiting for your resin to set in the mold, uh, I'm not always the best at it and I like to fiddle with it and play around with it. You know, is it set yet? Can I take it out? And a lot of the times I have taken them out the mold thinking it's fully set and it's not been and it can ruin it because um, it can move around and misshape if the resin isn't dried properly. Go okay, with step eight. We're almost there. It's a really useful tip just to say when you are taking your resin products out of the moulds when they're dried, um, just be really, really, really careful when you do it because um, I have had moulds where I've unmoulded them and they have ripped. They are silicone, most of the moulds, and you know, it's a really easy, easy thing to do, especially on the really low quality moulds, say like the ones I bought from like Wish and eBay, you know, I have taken them out of the moulds and they've just ripped apart. So just make sure you're really careful. Um, another reason why Just For You Online UK moulds are amazing, I have never ripped any of them and they are super thick, super high quality. I'm going to show you here a few demonstrations of me unmoulding my videos. I like to start from the corners, from the outer edges and also if there's a centre, like a centre of the coaster that you're making, I like to peel out the centre and then try and peel out the whole project after everything's sort of loosened up and you know that it's going to come out really easily and once again the mould's not going to rip. So um, yeah, as you can see here, I am just taking out peeling and then showing you a brief glimpse of the final results. I find the pyramid mould super super satisfying to undo just because it takes a long time to make and then you almost, the only thing you can do with that one is to peel the edges and then peel down. So this is just the best mould honestly. <laughs> And this mould, this pyramid mould, is a Just For You Online UK mould and you can find it in the link below. Step 9 is Step nine is cleaning and filing. When you take your resin project out of the mold, sometimes where the resin has over poured onto the side of the mold, you'll get like little tiny bits that you normally can just peel off or crack away and it won't affect your final result. But also the files that I showed you earlier on the shopping list, um, you can just take one of those and just file away any little bits of like leftover resin that have either stuck to the side of your projects or if you want to even out a sharp surface or anything like that, the filing tools are also really good for that as well. Step 10. This step 10 is pretty simple. I'm just gonna put some um, finished results up here, but I've titled it, enjoy and take lots of photos. Just because it's a really fun part of showing people what you've made. You should be proud, even if it's not the best. You're a beginner, you're trying. And I, I feel like just there's, there's things even I make now that I just think, you know, that's not great, but actually, you know, look around a photo, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be proud of it anyway, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm putting up um, all my finished results photos here from some of the tutorial videos that I played previously, so you can see what they turned out like. And yeah, hopefully this video just shows you that it is easy and it is fun, and you don't have to be scared of it. And hopefully, I've helped at least one person with this video to feel more confident about using resin art. 
And yeah, once again, if you want to ask me any questions about anything, follow me on my TikTok and Instagram social media. So fingers crossed that this YouTube video was helpful to you. And if you'd like to see another one soon, let me know. Or if there's anything in particular that you want me to talk about or show you, then let me know that as well. I did it, my first YouTube video, which means I'm also really proud of that as well. Thank you. <laughs> Over and out.